Hi and welcome back to A Case of Books. Today I'm going to talk through my favourite books coming out in January. I actually read so much stuff that I loved in January that I've had to split this into a top five adult books and a separate video for my top three children's and YA books. Now I need to quickly just mention Miss Treadway and the Field of Stars which I'm reading at the moment and absolutely loving. It was originally scheduled for February and I didn't notice in time that it had been pulled forward to January. But on to my first favourite of January, which is a book you've probably heard lots about already, and that's Homegoing by Yar Jassy. This book has had so much hype surrounding it, but it's the rare beast that actually manages to live up to it. It starts with the stories of two Ghanaian half-sisters, Effia, who is married to a slave trader, and Essie, who is sold into slavery. The book then follows the ancestors of the two women, stopping in and giving us these sort of character studies like interlinked short stories from one person of each generation. This structure is executed beautifully and you're never pining for a voice you've left behind because you're so immediately engrossed in the new story that you're being told. And then when you add in the fact that the writing is also exquisite, you get a book that will stay with you for a long time and I think will win lots of prizes. The impact of national trauma on individual families really reminded me of Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeleine Tien. And I think it will also appeal to fans of all involved who liked that style of lots of linked narratives from different perspectives. My next pick is probably my favourite January read and it's The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a loose retelling of the Russian version of the Jack Frost myth. It follows the fortunes of one family who live in snowy northern Russia as the myths and fairy tales brush up a little closer than normal to their lives. I loved everything about this book. I loved the writing style, which is lyrical and evocative. I loved the heroine, Vazia. I loved the way the myths are woven through the story. And above all, I love that it's ultimately about independence and finding your own path. It's a completely magical read and I didn't want it to end. Lots about it reminds me of a kind of adult version of The Wolf Wilder by Catherine Mandel. I think you'd also like it if you like the kind of dreamy fairy tale feel of The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan, or the dark Russian fable The Master and Margarita. This next book I picked up without knowing anything about it, but was intrigued because the proof copy compared it to Siri Husbed and to Ali Smith, who are two of my favourites. And the book is Innocence and Others by Dana Spiota. The book is about lots of different things, but it revolves around three different women. Firstly, Carrie and Meadow, who are high school friends who both go on to become filmmakers. Meadow makes controversial documentaries and Carrie makes feminist rom-coms. The third woman goes by a few different names, but we first meet her as Jelly. And the book is sort of loosely structured around the way that Jelly's life intersects with Carrie and Meadow's. But really the book is about how we see ourselves and others and how we tell stories about ourselves and others and you're never quite sure if what you're reading is a true representation of what's happened. I thought this was a really smart, unusual book. The narrative playfulness and ideas of how we see ourselves really reminded me of How Should a Person Be by Sheila Hetty. There's also Echoes of Paulina and Fran by Rachel B. Glaser and The Flamethrowers by Rachel Kushner. Next up is a collection of short stories and this is another book where I didn't really know what to expect and I was really pleasantly surprised. It's Difficult Women by Roxanne Gay. One of the things that made it such a pleasant surprise was how much she uses magical realism in the stories. This combined with some fairly unflinching subjects gives the collection a kind of dark fairy tale feel. Of 21 stories, I thought 8 were really exceptional and there was only one that I didn't like, which is a pretty good hit rate for a collection of short stories. I really like the evident joy that Gay takes in form, structure and language as well as big ideas. Also, just a heads up that a handful of the stories do have some fairly explicit rape scenes in them, including the very first story. The dark fable feel reminded me of short stories by Helen Oyemi and Angela Carter, as well as Isabel Greenberg's most recent graphic novel, although just to note that that is a bit more whimsical and playful than Difficult Women is. My last pick for January is a thriller, and it's Little Deaths by Emma Flint. I'm afraid I'll have to apologise that I forgot to get a finished copy of the book to show you, so I've only got my proof here that doesn't really show you much about the book at all. So I'm going to flash up the final cover just so you can get a feel of it. Now, Little Deaths is a literary thriller, by which I mean that the writing is as appealing as the plot and sort of page turneriness of it. It's about a woman called Ruth who lives in 1960s New York, and what happens when her two small children are kidnapped and then murdered and she becomes the chief suspect in the investigation. And while it is to a point about finding out what happened to the children, as much as anything it's about the way that society reacts to women like Ruth who is divorced and she smokes and she drinks and she has sex 
and she refuses to conform to what society tells her she should be like. It's a sharp, brilliant feminist thriller and I very genuinely read it in one sitting. There's a natural comparison to be made with books like Gone Girl with complicated female heroines, also more literary thrillers like The Woman Upstairs and books by Tana French. So those are my top five adult books publishing in the UK in January. I'd love to know if you've read any of them or you plan to read any of them. Do remember to check back soon for my top three children's and YA titles coming out in January and please remember to like the video and subscribe.